Hey everyone! Welcome to the Idol of Forbidden Magic Spotlight. Idol of Forbidden Magic unlocks the ability for you to become a necromancer, using forbidden magic to reanimate the dead and create your own army. As a necromancer, you won't have limitations on your character template, so you could be an archer bard, warrior, mage, or whatever else fits your playstyle. Before I hop into it, be sure to check out the Idol of Forbidden Magic wiki page. It'll have additional information not covered in this video, updates, and balancing changes. Idol of Forbidden Magic has a special quest line to obtain the Talisman. Simply enter any graveyard and begin killing the undead. You will obtain a special shard once you killed enough monsters and the graveyard's boss. Collect all shards from every graveyard and combine them to create the Idol of Forbidden Magic. Your Idol of Forbidden Magic starts at level 1 and has a maximum of 10 levels. As you level, you will unlock more relic slots, your minions will gain damage bonuses, and you have the ability to cast more powerful summoning rituals. Keep in mind, the Talisman gains experience from the damage your minions deal, not your character. Summoning rituals is powerful magic that allows you to reanimate the dead and create minions. To use summoning rituals, select the ritual from your ability bar, and then select any corpse you've done damage to. After a brief animation, your minion will rise. Your talisman begins with regular skeletons available at level 1. As you level, you'll see more summons unlock from your ability bar. Level 2 unlocks skeleton archers. Level 4, skeleton knights. Level 6, liches. Level 8, skeleton steed. And level 10 unlocks a skeleton dragon. These are just the initial summoning rituals, and we plan to release more in the future. Each summon takes up a certain amount of control slots, with 5 being the current maximum. You can view your control slots in the Follower section of your status bar. Skeletons take 1 slot. Skeleton archers, knights, liches, and steeds take 2, and dragons take 3. So, an example, with a max talisman, you could have 5 regular skeletons, or you could have a lich, archer, and a regular skeleton, or you could have a skeleton steed and a dragon. We may expand the maximum number of control slots in the future. Summoning rituals are not bound to a specific corpse type, meaning you don't have to summon skeletons on skeleton corpses or liches on lich corpses. You can summon a skeleton from a dragon corpse or a steed from an ice fiend. However, to successfully cast rituals, the corpse must have a minimum amount of carrion essentia. Carrion Essentia is the sum of the monster's stats, which are Strength, Intelligence, and Dexterity. This Ratman has 70 Strength, 50 Dexterity, and 30 Intelligence, so it has 150 Carrion Essentia. This means I can successfully summon a skeleton from its corpse. This Ogre Lord has 970 Carrion Essentia, so I could summon a Lich or Steed, but it's just under 1000 Carrion Essentia, so I can't summon a Dragon. Keep in mind that monster stats are not fixed and have ranges, so it is possible another Ogre Lord's Carrion Essentia could exceed 1000. Check out the wiki to see all the minimum Carrion Essentia requirements for each summoning ritual. Each summoning ritual has a unique advantage as it either gains a bonus or matches the skill points of the corpse used for summoning. Let's take the Skeleton Summon as an example. Skeletons match resisting spells, tactics, and wrestling. A base skeleton has 60 resisting spell, 60 tactics, and 55 wrestling. If we were to summon a skeleton on an ogre corpse that has 100 resisting spell, tactics, and wrestling, the skeleton summon would match these skills. If the ogre corpse only had 20 resisting spells, the skeleton summon would keep its 60 resisting spell base value. Some skill bonuses are capped, such as Majory. The Lich Summon fully matches Evaluating Intelligence, Resisting Spells, Tactics, and Wrestling, but it only matches Majory up to 120 skill points. So, if I were to summon a Lich on this Ancient Lich Corpse, it would cap the Summon Lich's Majory at 120, but match the remaining skills if they are higher than the Summon Lich's base value. You can find more detailed information about summoning ritual skill bonuses on the wiki. Idol of Forbidden Magic currently has 4 relics and you can enable 4 at a time. Carrion Rapture is an active relic which explodes a corpse or summoning causing AoE damage to all those around it. 
It's a great spell to use to provide extra damage while you're fighting, but it may be more beneficial to save it to use on a summoning that is about to die. Decrepify is an active relic AoE debuff that lowers the dexterity of all those affected. Creatures hit with Decrepify will turn gray while the debuff is active. Decrepify is useful to use on any creature, but it's most efficient to target monsters with high attack speed or strength. Essence Reanimation is a passive relic which increases the stats of your summons. Your bonuses increase as you level the relic. Skeletons, Skeleton Archers, Skeleton Knights, and Skeleton Steeds gain hit and damage bonuses. Liches gain intelligence and damage bonuses. And Skeleton Dragons gain hit, damage, and intelligent bonuses. Just like the skill bonuses, Essence Reanimation bonuses are depending on the summoning ritual you use and the corpse you use it on. Keep in mind, you only gain Relic experience for Essence Reanimation when you use a summoning ritual, so it's important to be summoning as much as possible even if you don't need a new minion. Essentia Tap is a passive relic which heals or replenishes mana for your summons. It's an extremely powerful relic as it's the only way you can heal your summons. Essentia Tap gains experience based on the amount of healing or mana replenishment when it procs. Thanks for watching. For more information, check out uoforever.com.